I'm really grateful that like you're in my mind, you know, <laughs> David, and, and uh, that's weird to think about. So I wonder, like, what is your experience when you hear me say, like, oh, my elbow hurts, you know, or whatever, or oh, like, I'm scared of this thing. Like, you seem to not have that, yet it's in our mind or in a shared experience with you somehow, you know? There's something that uh, seems you experience that's like less uh, attachments, more true to being or something like that. And yet you do hear us talk about these things. So I was wondering, it's in your mind too. What's your experience of that? Yeah, the the words are spoken and the states of mind are spoken about and so on and so forth, but but really experience comes always from interpretation. Like no one ever experiences anything in this world directly. It's always through the filter of interpretation. Because the ego made this world. This is the ego's world. So it's got the filter. It, it owns the copyright on the, on the filter. It owns the copyright on the original belief in separation. It owns the copyright on the filter. And it owns the copyright on the projected world. And it's a world of duality. Pain and pleasure, good and bad, right and wrong, so on and so forth. It's the ego's world. When you free your mind from the ego, all it means is you are not subject to its interpretations anymore. You know, you don't, at first you just don't heed that, that voice, that critical voice of, hey, won't you play another somebody's done somebody wrong song. You know, you, it's, you don't heed that song anymore. You don't, you go into an experience where you see that it's impossible for anybody to do something wrong to anybody, really. You, you go into an actuality, an experience of that, and then from that experience, it's, it's, it truly does free your mind, like in the Matrix, you know, when they're doing all the, the different moves, you know, part of the, the training program, and you know, and Morpheus says, how did I beat you? And he says, you were stronger and faster. And Morpheus says, do you believe that's air that you're breathing? See, he, Morpheus doesn't even waste the moment to, to point out that he still believes he's a human being and he's in a real environment, even though it's clearly a simulation. You know, they're just kind of doing this simulated thing. And, and he says, you, you really believe that that's air that you're breathing? You see, he goes right at the, the, the most basic assumption. And that's what happens when you free your mind of the ego, is really all you're doing is you're freeing your mind from the filter of interpretation, of egoic interpretations. Now, you know, you could, you could say there's the words, uh, my elbow is hurting or whatever, and that could be an ego statement, but the spirit has a different interpretation. It, it's like a transcendent interpretation of, of all words and all appearances and all things. It's a, it's a unified perception that simply n sees the false as false. And it doesn't break the false into pieces and make hierarchies of those false pieces. It just sees the construct for what it is. It sees the whole projected world and the whole filter as, as illusory. And so, <laughs> There are just no interpretations of the words. And it wouldn't have to be words, it could be faces, you know, a crying face, a laughing face, uh, a bloody face, a pimpled face, <laughs> uh, you know, a seeming a weary face, a frowning face. There, the faces could all be different, but the interpretation is actually the same. So, the body's eyes, once you go through this transformation of consciousness, the body's eyes continue to report what they were made to report. If people ask me, do you still see colors? Do you still see, do you still feel the breeze blowing? Do you still smell? Uh, do you, what do you hear? You know, what's, what's it like 
on the inside there, what's going on in the inside of your consciousness, is it still kind of, is it still kind of human, or what's going on? And, and the body's eyes, and the body's ears, and the, the body's nose, and all the things, the five senses still do what they were made to do. But the difference is, is that interpretation filter, which has given meaning to all these different sights and sounds and smells and tastes and touches, is, is been cleansed. It's, it's been shown as unreal. So really, the, the, the five senses, you know, seem to have all the data and the stimulation and everything still going on like humans, but they're coming in through a filter that's just blank. It's a blank canvas. It's like, it's totally blank. You know, it, it's like that's the feeling of emptiness that like Eric was talking about or Armel talked about. The, the feeling of, of, of stillness, it's just, it's, it's blank. It's just, the, 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 it's, there aren't categories. It's not like, it's not like those, those different stimuli are being categorized. And now we know from quantum physics that it's not like there's a world out there, like we were taught that light comes like in through the retina, and the sound waves come in and hit, hit the eardrum. It was all, well now we know that's all backwards. The eyes are more like projectors, instead of like little receivers with stimuli coming in, they're actually projecting it out. What's going on in consciousness and all that brain activity that they talked about and what the bleep, you know, the peptides and everything that's going on, all of that starting with consciousness. Then the brain and the peptides are part of uh, chemical reactions that are part of a projection and everything that's going on outside of the body the weather, other people, all the stimuli, everything is all projected outward. So that's the way it's really working. It's the, the world is an outward picture of an inward condition. The world's not coming at the human beings. The human beings and the world are both on the screen. And so is the brain. And so are those peptides. They're even on the screen. The peptides aren't causing anything either. That's where the scientists kind of half and half, you know, still believing the brain has power and the brain has a command center and, you know, all these different parts. That's, that's all part of the projection too. The mind is underneath it all, you might say, behind it all. And, and when you clean the filter through miracles, then you still perceive the world, but you just don't have any judgment of it. It's like watching the world with a blank, blank filter. So you don't have any charges and you don't see things kind of in a positive or negative way. It's just very still and very empty. And very wonderful, I have to say. It's, you know, sometimes people, the ego can interpret empty as, oh great, I'm going to do, my whole life's work is aimed at emptiness. You know, <laughs> I'm headed to be a Buddhist here or whatever, you know. But it's actually quite glorious. It's, it's you are filled up in the emptiness because there's not the ex extraneous stuff of judgment. Without an opinion, you have a wonderful experience. Without uh, uh, con conclusions, without categories, you know, good and bad and right and wrong and beautiful and ugly and everything. You know, truly beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but beauty is in the single eye of the beholder. Let thine eye be single. When I, thine eye is single, there's a state of of acceptance and non-judgment. That's what makes the beauty. It's, you know, it's very much like Vincent was saying, you know, that about the canyons and the sky and everything, and then, you know, then he started singing the jingle, nothing I see means anything, you know, it, and everyone laughed because it's like, that's just what the Course is doing. It's like, you think you see a beautiful world? Well, it's not so. You think you see an ugly world? It's not so. You think you see a hostile world? That's not so. Do you think you see a, you know, uh, you could just fill in the blank with anything, a violent world. That's not so. The violence is the judgment and the categorizing in the mind. The violence is in the filter. It's not in killing an animal or a person killing another person. 
but this is deep stuff. You have to actually go inside and follow the course and do the lessons and be taken into an experience where you get way, way back in the mind and you actually see that, wow, this is a blank filter back here. Cool. Ah, what do you call it? Happy dream. Oh, I like that. Uh, true perception, real world, whether, call it whatever you want, Jesus. It's, wow, it's really glorious. You know, let all things be exactly as they are. All things work together for good. There are no exceptions, you know, except in the ego's judgment. You know, today I will, you know, I will, without judgment, all things are equally acceptable. Don't you love those teachings? Without judgment, all things are equally acceptable. Of course, it would have to be so. You know, there could be nothing that you would say is, is this is good, this is bad. So, basically, you know, my, my message has been for the last, you know, 20 some odd years, it's like, get off the screen. Get off the screen. Don't keep clinging to playing a dream figure that the ego peopled. It just peopled the whole world with these false concepts. It peopled the whole world with these false images. You know, the Bible said, have no graven images before the Lord thy God. He wasn't talking about like totem poles or golden statues. He was talking about the whole cosmos. Everything that seems to be specific and unique is an idol. Because why? It stands in the way of perceiving the quantum field, perceiving the connectedness, perceiving the unification, that's, that's the difference. So, in, for me it's like I don't, I don't feel the ups and downs, you know, it's, it's just the sameness. I remember years ago, I, I, I read in the course, it's, it was right about that time where Helen was taking down the, the notes for the course right around uh, New Year's. And Jesus said, make this year different by making it all the same. You know, what a, what a New Year's resolution, you know. What's your New Year's resolution? I want it all to be the same this year. <laughs> what do you mean? Everything the same. Let me see everything is completely the same. And then you'll be happy. It's by perceiving differences. How do you perceive differences? You have to first believe in differences before you can perceive them. You know, people are always talking to me about, well, the yin and the yang and balance. There's no balance. No one ever is happy who believes in balance. I'll tell you that much. That's just another dualistic com concept. And the yin and the yang, you know, nope. Let all, without judgment, all things are equally acceptable. Then yin and yang just become two more words among the symphony of words that are available for the spirit to use. But there's no difference between the yin and the yang. You know, there's absolutely no difference between what the world calls, calls dark and lightness. You know, it's very, very, very transcendent. And it's all in the filter. It has, it really doesn't, you know, we could talk about the forms, I could still talk about pink ribbons, and I don't have a voice in my mind going, blasphemy, blasphemer, <laughs> dare you say that pink ribbon word, pink ribbons, blasphemy, you know. No, I'm more into like Elisa's song. Let not, let not my eyes be blasphemous today, nor let my ears attend to lying tongues. Only reality is free from pain. You know, that's the truth. Those are true words. But you have to actually get into the actual experience of what those words are, are reflecting. And that's where the joy comes in. But as long as you believe in differences, and you're perceiving differences, what a sticky mess. How do you see unification where there are differences? How do you see sameness where there are differences? Very simple answer, you don't. You, you come inside, you clean the filter of the mind, and then all things are equally acceptable then all things work together for good. Then you're not trying to, ch seeking to change the world. You're not trying to put forth an opinion or a belief or some kind of um, stance. I mean, just think how glorious, 
your state of mind would be if you had no stance at all. You had absolutely no stance on anything. And I've gone through those phases, believe you me, of, oh boy, was I an activist. I had a lot of stances. I took a lot of stances back in the old ego days. Uh, you know, of, for this, pro this, against this, pro against... I, I mean, I was in university for 10 years, so I, I thought that people that didn't have strong stances on things were... They were imbeciles, you know, they were, they were just, you know, they were spineless, uh, walking, I don't know what I would even call them back then, you know, I, I can't even think of the words anymore, it's just, this blankness has taken over. But, but you know, it, it really, I thought it was important to take stands, and so I did a lot of reading, I wanted to back up my stands, you know, with a lot of good education. If I was going to be a vegetarian, I wanted to have a lot of good data. If I was got into talk with one of these meat eaters, you know, I was going to make sure I was prepared, but had, had the good data to back up why it was better to be vegetarian. But that was just another concept, you know. Who would define the Christ? Who would define the Holy Son of God by things going in a mouth? You know, it's kind of tiny when you think about it, you know, defining reality by things that go in a mouth, you know, whatever those things are, you know. So that was part of a, a loosening from those concepts. And, and in the end, it's great not having opinions. Uh, you, you don't... You don't, you aren't crushed, uh, you, you, you aren't suddenly stupid if you don't have opinions. You're, it's, you're quite truly knowledgeable, <laughs> knowing not in terms of, of knowledge as the world talks about it, but truly the knowing of a peaceful heart, the knowing of a tranquil mind, you know, that kind of knowingness. It's not ignorance, it's, it's fulfillment, it's total fulfillment. But what I'm talking about is fulfillment and blankness. <laughs> fulfillment and a blank filter go together. They are actually the same. And I've had no harm come to me uh, from, from being empty. You know? It's actually very glorious. Very Magoo-like. <laughs> when people call me Mr. Magoo, I say, I thank you. <laughs> you see, that is a compliment. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.